Hello, welcome to another video. Today we are looking at a Dell 9150 and probably the filthiest computer I have ever worked on. So let's get it stripped down and see what we can do with it. As with most Dells of this era, the case is proprietary, meaning that you can't fit aftermarket motherboards, so we're stuck with the original Dell hardware, although it's not lacking in connections as you can see. When reinstalling these motherboards, take note that the bracket screws that hold down the motherboard are slightly different for the ones on the CPU, with the longer screws being used to hold down the CPU fan support bracket. These larger Dell Dimension cases support two front fans, however with no proper dust filtration you can see the state that they can get into when not looked after. The upper fan being 120mm and the lower fan being an 80mm. These Dell fans are generally quite good at moving air so we shall leave them in the system. This PCB hidden at the front of the system is the main front I.O. panel and supports the audio, power buttons and status lights. This cable can be tricky to get on once everything is in the case. Here you can see where it attaches to the motherboard. The power supply cables run across the top of the motherboard and then down behind these fan casings. And here we have the 4 pin power supply for the CPU. These two lower black connectors are for the front fans, one being a 5 pin and one being a 4 pin. These are not standard connectors to so be warned if replacing the fans. Next up is a standard 24 pin plug for the main power supply to the board. Here at the bottom left hand side of the case is the power supply to the hard drive. We also have a 4 pin Molex connector and a 6 pin GPU connector if needed. This system came with two 250GB SATA drives in a RAID 0 configuration. All the plastics in these cases can get very brittle over time and as you can see here we actually broke the SATA power supply. 
Thankfully, it was still secure enough to allow us to connect it. The CPU in this system is a Pentium D running at 3.2 GHz, the same, funnily enough, as we had in our small form factor 5150C in our previous video. Even after copious amounts of cleaning, we are still finding dust in this system which we cannot get rid of. In fact, the dust was on this machine for so long, it actually caused damage to the metal on the CPU cooler, which we cannot remove. So time to start putting the good bits back in. This is a Sound Blaster 0460 and was regarded as quite a decent card when this system was produced in 2006. The white connector you can see on the front connects up to the front audio panel that we installed earlier. The GPU is an ATI Radeon X1300 with 256 megabytes of RAM. The blue L-shaped connector you can see is to support any cards fitted into this system. However, if you're using an aftermarket graphics card, you might as well just take it out. We were lucky enough for this system to come with two DVD drives and a media card reader. Although the drives are showing their age being IDE based connections. The front panel simply slots in on the left hand side and then uses the same retaining bracket as the DVD drives on the right. And there we have it, one fully cleaned and reassembled Dell Dimension 9150. This is actually a surprisingly large and heavy case, especially when you sit it next to an E520. So now to the benchmarking results. PC Mark 05 scored a respectable 4,646, while Cinebench Revision 10 single threaded was 1,754, multi thread 3,284. Your creature already has his own personality. Alter and shape it by... Hey! What's going on? Aye! For them. What have we done for them exactly? Perhaps we should help them out. It might be nice. To keep us all going through the wind and the rain A sheep, oh lovely Sheep have many uses And the voyage is long We need more meat though Please, 
Use the leash to bring your creature to me. I do hope they'll be friends. So the Big Dale 9150 didn't score too badly. Black and White scored an average of 59 frames per second. GTA, although locked at 640 ball 480, scored an average of 30 frames per second. And Warhammer Dawn of War an average of 55 frames per second. So what could we do to upgrade this system? Performance wise it isn't much different from the 5150C that we tested in the last video. Upgrades, I think we should go for 4GB of RAM, and I'm fairly sure we have a GTX 580 lying around in our parts bin. I also feel adding a SATA DVD drive instead of using an IDE connection would speed up load times. So what do you think? What should we do to improve this system's performance? And then is there any games that you would like to see us test? This is Revivify, and I've been your host, RetroTed. Please like and subscribe to be notified when new videos become available.